Larissa and Mary Lydia. Hi. And Mary Lydia is a two wing three seven nine sexual social. And it's interesting because we're about to type Pamela DeBar, arguably the most famous group we have all time. And uh, she, we think she's also a triple positive, uh, potentially SP, self pres blind. So yeah, Pamela DeBar. Uh, she lost her virginity to David Bowie. Um, she's been with like basically probably like all of the super famous um, like guys of that era. Like uh, I think like Jim Morrison and Keith Moon, who were potentially typing next and Mick Jagger, like all, all of those guys, maybe more. <laughs> like, there's probably more, maybe Jimi Hendrix. I don't know. And I know. So I think Penny Lane from Almost Famous was also based on her. And she's also an author and she teaches writing classes. I almost took one actually, but I did not. So because I saw that same article that's there that says the real Penny Lane or whatever. And I didn't know if it was actually or, um, but yeah, that's cool. Yeah. And Kate Hudson's kind of playing a 279 type character in that, if I remember absolutely she's all free and happy and yeah yeah and really like that kind of I mean I think this is kind of what happens when you're triple posi is it's exactly like being that which ends up kind of biting you and like causing some more disastrous thing that you didn't anticipate and don't know like how to process hmm yeah, and for people who don't know, the, the positive types in the Enneagram are two, seven, and nine. So together, it's like a very like bright, kind of fairy, um, bubbly, cupcakey, <laughs> and <laughs> love, <laughs> love with flowers in the background. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this is Pamela DeBar. Uh, she was very pretty when she was younger. I think she's still good looking. Like she still got it. So pretty, yeah. Like I don't think I don't think she's sexual blind. But I guess we'll for a minute. Um, you can kind of see by her like her big smiles and stuff that she's got like some positive stuff in there. I'm not great at instincts via photos, but she does have in several of these photos, pretty like penetrating eyes. Yeah. Yeah, and she looks nine fixed. Um, like soft kind of like flower child thing. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, so we can watch this video from when she was like, she was sort of like past, I think her, maybe like her groupie days, like, but she was, I think maybe this is when she was like plugging her book. I'm not sure. Um, but this, this video is when she was like a bit younger and these people are horrendous <laughs> to her. They're like total, like uptight prude slut shamers. Um, but she handles it very well, which I think, yeah, like speaks to her being. Hello. Pamela joins us now to talk about her life then and now. Hi, Pamela. Hi. I guess a groupie is what we all think it is, a girl who shows up backstage and hangs out with the stars and follows them from town to town. Uh, that's one description of a groupie, yes. What would be your description? Well, uh, the word groupie uh, came into being long after I was doing these things. <laughs> but uh, it, it, You were a pioneer. In the, yeah. the uh, but it, it actually just means some uh, a girl who likes to spend time with the guys in rock groups, not necessarily sexually, but uh, a lot of times you just want to be backstage, just involved in that scene. It's so exciting. There but if are... you are a girl who's allowed backstage uh, to be with the rock stars, 
isn't it pretty much taken for granted that you're available for them? Uh, quite often that is the case, but you know, you, you can establish a reputation for yourself and that, uh, you know, that is, doesn't have to be the case. I, 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 I went after specific members of, I mean, I didn't just go for any guy in a band. I I, it was very specific. I love, I don't know that <laughs> that kind of does make me lean social sexual or like sexual social even, but she seems kind of social dom to me. Yeah. Yeah, I checked some I looked a bit at her beforehand and definitely my first impression is that she seems to have high social. And also I thought she kind of reminds me of Tori Amos. Oh, okay. Interesting, yeah. Yeah, a little bit. And of course, I also think that Tyrannus is like a seven nine stem, so that's probably. I'm not seeing like a center popping out like super loudly yet, but I'm leaning to core. And this is sort of image, like she's sort of like controlling her image doing all of this, which she might have done regardless of where her center is, but. Yeah, and she's kind of. Um redirecting like they do this to her several times in this interview where as you said they're kind of slut shaming her and like trying to make it about like groupies just have sex with everyone and she's like well maybe some do but not all and she keeps kind of steering the conversation back to like can we focus on the things that I do and stop you know trying to take it where you're trying to take it the thing you noticed with her eyes I think is interesting Oh, just she's squinting a lot. She kind yeah. of squints, yeah. It almost does seem like a sunny. <laughs> Maybe it's like some weird internal. <laughs> I can only see what I want. Triple posse. <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> like a physical <laughs> correction. Um, I was just actually thinking though, if she was a seven core and social sexual, if if that is her stacking, she would be way more splashy about her. Like she is pretty splashy about her conquest, but not in like a sloppy seven social sexual way, which is more crass and like, and I feel like she's trying to maintain like the good girl image, which is like obviously a super ego thing, but she's doing it in a kind of soft, a soft way, not like a six reactive, like, you got it all wrong. <laughs> Right. It's not, it's not argumentative. She's just like, kind of like, no, no, dear, this is how it is. Mm -hmm. And she's not buzzy, like a, like a seven or, or head types feel to me. She, there's, she, her presence is kind of calming. Yeah. Which, which could be argument for her being a nine, but. Um... Yeah, she does look a bit diffused, but that could also be. I did consider nine because she does strike me as a bit diffuse more, but at the same time, she does seem like she she is comfortable with like speaking, uh, speaking out and like uh, expressing, like. Yeah, I agree. It's like she is calm, but she is able to locate herself quickly. She doesn't doesn't hesitate at all when answering questions about herself so there's like an alertness that's there that pulls me away from core nine mm -hmm. um and the interesting thing with the squinty eyes is that it really looks apparent in that interview but not necessarily all of these photos that you've pulled up mm -hmm. some of them and some of them not I also think like if you're if you think about like a social sexual with a two it's like that is kind of the groupie combo like it's like the helper it's like the helper of the people who are like having chaotic fun like whatever that person's interested in, especially with seven and nine it's like yeah it's going to be something like entertainment oriented probably and like of course she's like the groupie helper that like sees them and like comforts them and gives them what they need that's yeah. an excellent point and like they will uh identifying herself as a groupy thing partly seems like social but i can also see it a bit too she that it's like uh, defining herself by her relationships yeah yeah good so, point to so these people yeah yeah 
it had to be someone's music I love, some something that drew me to them. I did, who was just the first it. for you? Who were you attracted to first? Well, the Beatles, Paul McCartney. And had you ever seen Paul McCartney? Uh, no, this was when he first came on, the, you know, the scene, the Ed Sullivan show and all that. And how old were you at the time? About 15 and a half. And didn't you go through some sort of Paul McCartney ritual? Every oh, night? yes, it was. It was it were. so funny. <laughs> well, there was a lot of the things I had to do. But one of them was I had to hear the Beatles. The last sound I heard before I went to sleep. So if the dog barked or a truck went by or anything like that, I would have to get up out of bed, put the Beatles on for a couple of seconds and, start, and then get back in bed. And many of those silly rituals. You were and, probably up all night at time. Huh? <laughs> and it didn't work. I never met Paul McCartney. So. And that does seem something like, yeah, like a social seven, nine stem would do. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> very seven, nine sounding. I have manifested celebrity encounters as well. So. <laughs> <laughs> like she doesn't necessarily say that she wants to like be, be there. I mean, she does kind of allude that she wants to be his Paul McCartney's great love or whatever, but um, it seems more social. Kind of. You know, if it a says girl, a lot for those rituals. This out to be a groupie. How does she get there? How does she get backstage? How does she be, get acquainted with a rock star? Well, you know, I, that's a hard question for me because I lived in Hollywood at the time, yeah. and the Sunset Strip was the only place to be then. So I was there, and so were a lot of the guys in these groups: the Doors, the Buffalo Springfield, the Birds. A lot of the local bands were just hanging out on the Sunset Strip, also. So yeah. you could meet. So that's again more like social image type stuff I think like uh the place to be we were hanging out with like all the cool people kind of social sexual type of kind of stuff um it's interesting that she's like you know you just go here and do it like just making it sound kind of easy like like you just you know, you just show up and then they just invite you back like obviously like the, I hear some like pride in that a little bit um because she's acting like i don't know how everyone can't just do this do this if you go to the sunset strip then you can go backstage obviously meet them that way Pam, we're showing some pictures of you now with with people is oh, that, that's is keith that moon from the who dressed up in drag he always had he had many many personalities i was alice cooper i was a platinum blonde at the time i've been every color in the world this is don johnson this is this was just taken real recently now you speak highly of don johnson you you lived with him for about a year is that right yeah we're we're still real good friends and um that was real important to me with these men that i was crazy about i wanted to maintain a friendship with them i didn't just want to spend yeah social dom confirmed <laughs> And uh, what is what does Jace call social sexual? Like the best friend stacking, like that's like mm -hmm. important to them, and it's easy for them to become best friends with people. And she is kind of doing that that seven thing of like the conquests um, here. Like she's like literally showing pictures of dudes she's banged on the stock show, <laughs> but it's like they're framed as relationships. So um. right. Yeah, this whole thing does actually like smack of social sexual. Like I definitely like thought, uh, or that was my first thought when I looked at her was that she's probably social sexual. That I did consider some. In the night with them. You're In fact, pretty, I you're pretty graphic about some of their skills in bed. Were any of them offended? Don Johnson, you you talked. He was not at all offended. <laughs> he laughed his butt off when he read this book. He said, how do you remember all this stuff? But of course I kept diaries. For some of us, the, the word groupie has negative connotations. Right. We think of somebody who- I was really feeling nines and nine fixers of the diary cubes. <laughs> probably is not a nice girl. I think I'm a real nice girl. But how, how do you start- You're certainly nice to a lot of rock musicians anyway. Do you have- They're nice to me too. <laughs> when you, when you have... Oh, I hate that guy. Like how does she not- respond to that in any way like no, like number one that's nine fix like I don't know that just pulls me more like twoing one or something because she just is kind of like eh, actually you know and it's and she's just calm and fine about it um you know I wouldn't be reactive about that but I would have put him in his place a little bit more yeah I'm like I'm like torn on her wing right now but um but yeah it's like she goes into this like smiley like yeah 
that's not what I was. And, but you sort of told me like, like you can go into like that kind of Stepford wife mode too. And you're like angry. And then you're like, hi. <laughs> like my reaction to him would have been something like, well, as I've already said, that's not really what it was about. You know, I would have said something like that. So it's like really still nice. And I would have probably given some big smiles with it and all of that. So like, it would have been similar, but the way that she just kind of, I don't know, sometimes with the one wing, it's almost like they just swallow whatever is said real quick and then like, you know, and it's, hmm. I don't know. It's sort of like, because they've got that access to the one reaction formation thing, um, what comes out is exactly the opposite of what emotion you think would come out. Um, but it's just so automatic that it's impressive. Hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. I have these relationships, so I'm sorry, Something I didn't mean to interrupt. Yeah, I'm just wondering, do you, do you always sleep with them when no. you're a groupie? Or, do, or sometimes you, you're just friends with them? <laughs> Most of these guys I was friends with. Uh, when I was in a bad, my own band called the GTOs, it was an all girl band, and they would come to town and look us up. They wanted to hang out with us. They want to go to parties with us, uh, clubs, concerts. Uh, we took them to the best stores for records. Uh, in fact, most of them I didn't sleep with. I, I wanted to, you know, have friendships with them. And for instance, Frank Zappa was my mentor. He produced my band. I lived at his house, took care of his children. It certainly wasn't a groupie for him. You know what I what mean? What do your parents think about all this? They thought I was a nut. <laughs> no, they, they worried about me. Worried? My mom was very disturbed. This was an unprecedented era. This you have a daughter yourself? Really? No, I have a son. Oh, suppose you had a daughter here and she were, say, 15 and a half and starting to do the things you did at that <laughs> age. How would you feel about it? <laughs> you wouldn't give it up. <laughs> well, it's a different time. Uh -huh. When I was out there doing this, of course, my mom was scared and everything, but there was no AIDS, there was no herpes, uh, there was, it was uh, safer on the street. John Lennon hadn't gotten shot yet. It was not a hard, it was, it was, it was the peace love really permeated the air. It was a real feeling, that peace love thing. <laughs> Little did she know <laughs> that would be literally her, her personality types era to shine. And then it all came crashing down. <laughs> I loved her little like super ego scold finger about, you know, how she'd feel about it with her daughter. <laughs> that was great. She's like, no, no. <laughs> yeah. And there's also some of that image reframe sort of stuff going on. Well, it was different for me because like, like, and it was still okay and safe and good. And, but now it's not like <laughs> when I did it, it was good. It was okay. Yeah that you wrote in your book about John Lennon. I found it curious. You were in love with Paul McCartney. And uh, you said during the concert that John Lennon looked down at a group of you with disdain. That, no, he rode by in a limousine. He rode by in a limousine. And I, I was, oh my God, there's John Lennon, John Lennon. But he looked over and the, it wasn't at us with disdain. It was a real sorrowful, sorrow and contempt and just almost, he was upset at being in the position he was put in. Mm -hmm. Who was the most disturbed rock He's I feel like that speaks to him having four in his personality. <laughs> yeah. It's like the first time I went to the strippers, I cried. <laughs> like, obviously this is different, but. <laughs> um, you know, her band is, her band was actually good. Like, it was like a bunch, just a bunch of girls, like having fun and singing. It's like. <laughs> nine stem girls <laughs> that was that was like triple posi soundtrack to the max like that's the music that's playing my head when I'm like walking around places <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure how much influence she had like writing or any of that but that is fucking hilarious <laughs> oh yeah and Frank Zappa was involved and so there'd obviously be absurdity absurd ab absurdist kind of elements if he has influence i don't know if he did but i am a disneyaholic and i went to disneyland with almost everyone i ever 
knew. I took a lot of boys there too. I had a lot of romantic experiences there and a lot of naughty things happened in the dark. I guess it was 1968. <laughs> like she always has to bring it back to that stuff, eh? Like, yeah. <laughs> but she's calling it naughty. So again, that takes me away from, you know, seven head. Like she's obviously got this present super ego or not from seven head, but from seven being core. She's just obviously got this super ego that's like, I'm going to tell you about this, but I'm going to tell you that it's naughty. <laughs> Yay. I went with my friend, Michelle Meyer, uh, my roommate, and we took acid. It was a good place to take acid. The three little pigs started chasing us. Everywhere we turned, there were the three little pigs and they looked real lascivious, you know? Wow. It really came to life. <laughs> One of the funniest things that ever happened, the um, Abraham Lincoln ride had just happened, right? And it was like, there he was. He was Abraham Lincoln all of a sudden. He was speaking to me. I believed it. He was a <laughs> normal lady sitting next to me. And I leaned over to her and I said, what year is this? <laughs> she probably still talks about that. <laughs> I mean, that seems like, yeah, seven, nine <laughs> nonsense. <laughs> And maybe self press blind too. Like let's let's all go to Disneyland and do acid, right? I <laughs> smoking. Wow, he's still extremely enigmatic and impossible to pinpoint. And uh, I never, I still don't know quite what to say to him. Sometimes I still. After 20 years, get nervous when he walks into the room. I don't even know why. It's just like, oh, he's Frank. <sighs> you know, hi, Mr. Zappa. Sometimes I still call him Mr. Zappa. It's like some, it's like some two simping. That's like, <laughs> 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 like the the big daddy. Like must must show reverence to the daddy. <laughs> Which I think can be confused with probably sixy stuff too, because sixes do that, but two twos it's more like charming, where it's it's more like um about their relationship to the person than I think sixes or six. Yeah, with, with two, we're just doing it to flatter you. It's not because you're gonna be able to tell us what to do. Um, it's it's just that we think it'll like, you know, pump you up and make you feel good. And then, and then you get something out of it, right? <laughs> you know, it's, I called him that for years and it kind of stuck. And I, you know, you just, I feel like I'm in the presence of some very special, important uh, individual. And I, I've always felt that way and I still do. Basically, I'm in the idea business, whether it's a spoken idea or a musical idea or something else. It's in broadest terms, it's the idea business. Yeah, I think he's 174. I was going to say that statement alone felt at least seven fixed to me. Um, and, and really like a, like a one seven combo makes sense because to me, they're kind of um, taking ideas and then kind of constructing them into something with one. Um, I don't know. Interesting. Hello dolls. Today, I am going to be talking about 200 Motels. It was a film I was in in 1970. Uh, Frank Zappa wrote, directed, produced, starred in everything. He was always so darn ahead of his time. He actually made this movie on video. And here is the cover of the new re-release, the big box set of 200 Motels. Um, Zappa sent it to me because I am featured in the book. Yeah, so we were talking earlier about, because um, she does have like these videos where she's showing her trinkets, like her her dresses, these things she's in. Um, she has these like uh, kind of, I don't know, they're not garage sales, but she like sells, she sells stuff. Actually, we should look at her Instagram. Um, but uh, but yeah, it, it, I think that it's like self-preservation and service of social and sexual and not she doesn't seem social self pressed to me i i don't get that kind of i don't know against the grain social self press thing from her at all (laughs) 
I want to buy a Pamela DeBar dress. <laughs> oh, she broke her foot. Broke her oh. rushing around. Maybe that's a sign that she's self-pressed blind. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I broke my toe over the summer and um, I did it because I was like moving a picture, like a really large picture um, that's framed and super heavy. I dropped it on my toe and my reaction is like, I have a toe? Like, <laughs> like that's my first reaction. Shock, then pain. <laughs> I thought that's interesting, the picture with the heart with uh, that's like penetrated by something. By a pencil. I don't yeah. know. But... Yeah, I regret not taking her saying when she did it in Toronto. Because they seem fun. They just seem like uh, a few days of like um, women hanging around and her telling stories and kind of, I guess, telling you how to write like autobiographical kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But it just seemed like a more fun thing to do than anything. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> oh, coming to her trips to Disneyland. <laughs> <laughs> like, it would be so good if her story was recent. Like, <laughs> they just did that. They just got high on acid there. Um, I'm kind of leaning to wing three now. There is something especially in, in the photos and stuff that's very showy and performative. Um, yeah, although she's social sexual in that also. Um, right. Or And if she has a seven fix, that would also kind of play into that, I think. Yeah. Because she would be, she would be seven wing six, like head and nine wing one, probably. Yeah. Gut. Unless are you guys seeing nine wing eight? No, I feel like she has something one-ish in her. So either she has double one or just wing one. So one potentially interesting thing, I don't I don't know how um you know valid this all is, but from the Arica school from back in the 70s, they have some descriptions about facial features in different types. And she does have the one that they described for two, which I also have, which is there's more tension in her right brow. And so it kind of brings it up slightly more and then makes the other one just appear kind of differently. She looks, she looks a lot softer when she's younger. Like I would lean two wing through when she's younger. And like, I know we've talked about, like a bunch of us have talked about it a few times, like how your face sort of ages with, and the energy of your personality type. Um, there is something sort of one-ish, one-seven-ish about her, her face. Like it sort of feels like a little bit of that kind of, it's like a sunshiny mask kind of thing, but, um, which sounds so unflattering, but it's just... <laughs> I don't know it's hard to say because she is doing a lot of the the wing three type like like here's who I know here's here's this thing I start in like this thing right here like here's this thing I'm featured in all her book like she loves having her books about or all these relationships that she's in and um they're not really about her like virtuous acts if you will it's more about the relationships and like who she is to the person which seems more two wing three than two wing one but yeah that's a good point so for the for the arica school thing this is how it's worded i'll read for three two and one three says often the right eye is smaller more closed than the left or the area around the the right outside corner is puffy two says Often the right eyebrow has more tension than the left, being pulled up or down or showing puffiness directly under the eyebrow. And then one says often the left eyebrow has more tension than the right, being pulled up or down or showing puffiness directly under the eyebrow. Hmm. I don't know that it helps so much with the wings, but. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. It's hard to tell. 
So here's another argument for two and three is that she's, um, how can I phrase this? It's, it's like, she's the hostess of the like backstage. Like she's like making it fun. Um, for all of her friends backstage doing this thing. Like you said, it's not like she's like, um, the things that she's highlighting about herself, even if they're things that she does as well, but that she doesn't talk about them are not things like, you know, I adopt a bunch of rescue dogs and I send a bunch of money to these charities. And, um, you know, tubing three can highlight that stuff about themselves, but it's still kind of background to like what they're hands on doing to like make a good experience for people. Yeah. Yeah, it makes more sense for her to be like 379 adjacent, I think, too, because that's like the party fun. Yeah, these quotes are funny. Yeah, she's definitely self has blind in these quotes. He invited me into his private world, and I was hoping that the glass slipper would fit my size seven foot. (laughs) I love that life is once again very interesting, though it always should be, and it will be if I make it so, because to me that um of course is like a super triple posi statement but also you know the it speaks to the power of two like i'm in control of this um also um seven adding to that because it's not sort of you know victim of circumstance kind of a combo there's a proactivity to it Mm -hmm. that it's like she isn't expecting or she it's not just happening to her but she's like making things happen right she's impacting her environment not being impacted by it he's still my eternal groupie heart Um, (laughs) and then the wonderful patty darbinville is going to read And another wonderful groupie, proud groupie girl came all the way from Colorado, Patty Johnson, to read about. She's like, it's kind of too It's like flattering the other people already. Um... For my 12th birthday, my dear Aunt Edna got me my first white leather bound gilt edged Bible, which I still have. <laughs> I've voraciously <laughs> studied the New Testament, especially the words printed in red ink, the words he said. It wasn't long before I hung photos of Elvis next to the huge color portrait of a glittery Jesus that my dad brought home from Mexico. The way I felt about these icons was strangely similar, with one blasphemous exception. The king made me feel giddy and horny, while the king of kings made me feel guilty about it. Oh my god, I love this. This is perfect. (laughs) It's like two and seven fighting. (laughs) Yes, and the, and the, um, I don't know. The glittery Jesus was such like awesome imagery to (laughs) you. It's like, let's really sparkle up this super ego. Yeah. Like that she opens with like a, like a thing about like the Bible and everything is also, I mean, doesn't mean she's a super ego type, but that is super ego influence. Like having these memories, like Jesus, like even if it all happened to her, I feel like super, People with super ego influence, like in their core, at least like internalized stuff. When I was about 13, I had just started rocking out. The pastor at the Methodist church I'd recently joined stated that dancing was a sin. I was dumbstruck and poured through the pages of my Bible, looking for the verse that made this horrid proclamation. I never found it. But aha, Psalm 150 says, praise him with timbrel and dancing. Wow. I had no idea what timbrel was, but the passage gave me mighty relief. You know, I mean, obviously speaks to super ego that she um, kind of was looking for some reassurance that it's okay to dance or, um, I don't know, it's interesting because she kind of just like brushes it off and and it's like, no, dancing can't be bad. Like, basically, I'm going to prove to you that it's not, is kind of more how she took it. it. Wasn't like, I need to find this permission is just I got to show you because I know that dancing can be bad which is sort of in a way how super ego operates it's it's like more of an internal kind of compass 
like deciding what's good and what's bad for itself. Right. Mm. And with, uh, with six, it's a little bit different because they're um, kind of more needing those external structures or, you know, they might've been looking in the Bible for something that supported like, see, this is okay. It says so right here, but she's like, no, see, you can dance too. Is kind of how I took like dancing's okay. Mm -hmm. If she was like, if she was two wing three, then she would still have two, six and like two and wing six and wing one in her in her trifix so she would have the triple super ego whammy yeah i mean it is interesting that she's like opening this whole segment with um with you know about the bible and the glittery jesus and um and all of that i mean i do just because i think it's sort of fascinating to study like all world religions and stuff so i do bring religion into like like thematically into some of my collages and stuff mm. um and particularly stuff around the virgin mary um so yeah i don't know i don't i don't know that it points to it either way that she's saying this stuff yeah because she's got several things super ego regardless mm -hmm. And social first. Yeah. I mean, I guess if I, if I think like, she does kind of seem double heart though, in some ways, like, like double image. She's like pretty consistently putting out this like signal that she's like the ultimate groupie, even in just these parts where she is talking about the Bible and stuff, she's still making it sound almost like a rock show. You know what I mean? It's like, it's almost like leading up to like going to a rock show. So. Right. Yeah. I'm, you know, like we mentioned before and, and you first brought up, I think the things that she's highlighting are more two and three territory. Mm -hmm. It's, it's my help through my um, kind of attachment -y connections. You know, it's, it's not as much about this, purity that I don't um even maybe need to advertise or whatever there's something there's something where she wants to kind of flash her image at you a bit more than chewing one I think if that makes sense yeah totally I'm curious I'm gonna listen to more of her music and read her books and I think I think she seems super fun yeah I like I like the what is it? GTOs. Um, so yeah, Pamela DeBar, uh, two wing three, seven wing six, nine wing one, social sexual.